Hello, I'm Joe Marks. Welcome to another edition of The Road Back, brought to you by Club Resort Business, Club Resort Chef, and the Club Resort Chef Association. Today's episode is sponsored by The Montague Company, a family-owned, family-operated business that traces its history to its founding in San Francisco in 1857 by Wilfried Weed W.W. W. Montague. Today, the company is based in Hayward, California, and is known for using the skilled techniques and fine craftsmanship acquired in over 140 years of specialized manufacturing experience to produce the highest quality commercial cooking equipment. Montague's well-known and well-respected brands include the Legend Series of heavy-duty ranges, counter equipment, fryers, broilers, and gourmet pizza ovens, Excalibur Custom Island Suites, Technostar High Quality Restaurant Series ranges and equipment, and Vectair High Quality Convection Ovens. The company also recently acquired Turbo Coil Refrigeration Systems to further position Montague as a world leader in hot and cold integrated applications. Learn more at montaguecompany.com. For today's fresh insight into how club and resort properties are meeting the challenges posed by the coronavirus outbreak and finding new and innovative ways to boost business levels and start their return to full operation, we're going to head out to St. Louis, Missouri to catch up on the flurry of activity that's taken place at Bell Reeve Country Club over the 22 months since it hosted the 100th PGA Championship in August of 2018. Even with the disruptions posed by the pandemic, this storied 123-year-old club has now completed the final stages of a comprehensive $19 million restoration and improvement plan that has included transforming its tennis facility into a multifaceted rackets complex that now includes lights and has led to a dramatic rise in tennis and pickleball play, the club has also rebuilt and reseeded all of the golf course's greens, expanding the practice range tee and adding a new three-hole short course, re-envisioning all of its dining concepts, including the creation of a new standalone fieldhouse restaurant, which has helped to boost food and beverage usage to an all-time high, and adding a new sport conditioning center fitness facility. With us today from Bell Reeve are the current club president, Lisa Girl, general manager and chief operating officer, Michael Chase, and Carlos Araya, the club's director of grounds and assistant general manager. Thank you all for giving us a few minutes today. And Michael, maybe you could start by giving us a quick history and timeline for how the need for all these projects came about and how they were originally planned and scheduled. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having us. <clears throat> you know, it's a it's a longer story than a short story. In mid 2015, 2016, the club underwent a capital reserve study at a member survey and ultimately in the fall of 2017, proposed a clubhouse renovation plan to the members. That plan passed, but in the review process, there was many comments about what wasn't included. Updates to rackets, updates to our greens, more family-friendly activities and thinking forward. So ultimately, right about the time I began at the club and Carlos assumed a new role, the board paused on that plan, put the focus on the 2018 PGA Championship. Following the championship, we went back to the drawing board with the elements of the first plan that were really well enjoyed and listening to the feedback of what else was desired. Through that, in the time frame of September to November 2019, we developed the rackets plan that ultimately was executed, the greens restoration and rebuild that was ultimately executed, the development, conceptualization, design of the field house that was ultimately built. We re-envisioned the clubhouse plan to put focus on member gathering areas and updating the entire clubhouse. And then during the project, with the aid of committees and the board, the group really allowed staff some freedom to dream and vision. Ultimately, the sport conditioning center was an addition that came about through member input and staff development. And the three-hole short course Tucker's Trail was a late addition, a real true vision of Carlos, our greens contractor, Sanders Golf, and our golf uh, team. So it all developed in a short period and then added over the course of execution, which just wrapped up last month. Well, that's a lot to put on the plate, but as you neared the finish line and the coronavirus outbreak unfolded, what sort of discussions had to be held about reconsidering some parts of the project? And were there any adjustments made in design or construction or other aspects planned as you decided to proceed? Ultimately, we didn't consider readjusting or minimizing only for the fact that everything was under construction when the pandemic hit. It was more of how can we get the club complete and open for the members? And, you know, 
what way we how may we proceed in the future ultimately looking at the availability of labor construction we added an additional element to the project trying to best position the club for the future carlos can you talk about how the greens growing process went through the pandemic yeah you know, we had a plan it was already a staggered um, goal to open one nine and open another to be as least disruptive and create accessibility to the membership when you throw in a pandemic then you build a plan that has a central team. So a lot of that plan, we were trying to kind of maintain that goal. Um, it was a little more challenging and we had to review kind of what was important, what were the primary goals of the golf course. Also how we could obviously open it. So not only for the members, but also from the business side. And we were able to achieve that with quite a bit of communication um, with the committee, green committee, the board, and then ultimately communicating out to the membership and also following you know, some of the many guidelines that we got from the CDC and county on how we could operate as essential teams. It was challenging, but uh, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to our team and our board and Michael for the support. Well, how did finishing all these projects during the pandemic affect things? Not only because of how Bell Reeve had to operate, but where your contractors and suppliers were concerned. Did you have to create a lot of contingencies for best and worst case scenarios? Well, we did that um, we certainly had supply chain issues um, you know tracking down furniture etc other supplies for the construction you know really all over the country we had some members that had transportation companies that helped us secure um, transportation for goods um, into st. Louis so we our goal was to be ready to be open when we were allowed to be open so it was really you know while we had worst case scenario plans um, you know, we really were pivoting day by day based on construction and how things were going and how things were getting shipped into St. Louis to, to finish everything up, um, along with all the, the mandates that we were trying to abide to with the county. The other the other interesting challenge was we had anticipated having our design team at in, who's from the East Coast, to move everything in. And instead of that, um, we had the committee and staff and, and members doing the unpacking of the furniture and um, you know putting things in place, et cetera. Some of, some of which included FaceTiming the uh, manufacturers to figure out how to get it all put together. But you know um, we were slated to open member dining on Easter weekend, and um, you know so it was right in the thick of the pandemic. And while we're still you know social distancing to some extent, you know it's really recreated the social fabric of the club because we have all these great spaces now to for members to enjoy together rather than kind of a separation so to speak and the other thing is we've had an incredible interest from new members um, over the course of the summer which has been super exciting to see um, folks bringing guests out that are that are excited about you know what Bell Reeve is looking like for the future um, and I think most other clubs have kind of deferred projects right now so the fact that we're new and fresh and being forward-looking um, is, uh, is resonating with, with new members. We were able to open as soon as the county would allow us and I'll give a lot of positive uh, credit to our team of staff as we're still missing a number of furniture pieces today coming from overseas or other areas of the country and ultimately when you walk in the clubhouse you don't feel that as a member or as a, someone attending one of the events we're allowed to do in this time. We were able to minimize disruption in the sense that all of our members, or nearly all, prefer dining outside. While we wrapped up construction in other parts of the clubhouse in May as we reopened. Is there any other advice that you might have for fellow club managers and board members about planning and executing projects in today's environment? Yeah, I think the, the, the things that at least I could share is Obviously, everyone knows about planning, right, and execution and alignment. Uh, but I think alignment with the strategic plan, if you kind of go kind of piggyback off what Michael mentioned, um, when we went back to the drawing board, we also had a board retreat in the winter of 18 that talked about uh, our plan of Bell Reef 2025, which was a plan to achieve better revenues and a lot of positive things that came out of that that drove a lot of the vision from the operator side. Um, Creating that, I think, was a, a great jumping point other than envisioning the projects and how they would come together. Um, that was big for us. And then taking that plan and then educating the membership as a whole and also allowing us to develop operational goals that Michael created and shared down through the departments um, and the executive team. 
So we've had kind of a lot of alignment through that strategic plan has given us vision um, and created milestones, right? Because when you have disruptions, then you have a pandemic, it's easy to get distracted, but having milestones and seeing that those targeted dates move, um, fortunately and unfortunately, that's gonna happen. I mean, you're gonna, no matter how well you plan, how much you communicate, things are gonna occur that you, uh, more than just the pandemic. Um, and we're able to at least reset ourselves and communicate the change, which ultimately creates a level of credibility. Because when you're doing a project of this magnitude, um, everyone that uh, is looking at it is wanting to get it done, wants to see it, but also wants to know its progress because there wasn't a lot of folks on the campus. So communication was the, the final piece that I thought uh, that I, I carry forward and I share with folks that I've talked to as we've kind of wrapped this project up. It's a necessary tool and communicating the not so good is as important as all the, the positive milestones um, because the level of transparency that I think the club and the board authorized has allowed us a lot of credibility within the membership. And now when things go a little different, then you can see that there's support even when it's not uh, the not so favorable news. Well, it's certainly impressive to see and hear about all that you've accomplished uh, given the conditions of the past several months, especially. So we thank you all for your input. I think it's certainly going to be helpful to other managers as they consider or execute projects at their properties under these unique conditions that this year has brought about and imposed. Once again, this has been The Road Back, brought to you by Club Resort Business, Club Resort Chef, and the Club Resort Chef Association. And today's episode was sponsored by Montague, the Montague Company. If you have a great idea or success story you'd like to see featured in a future edition of The Road Back, please email us at editor at clubresortbusiness.com.